Great. All right, so thanks for everyone for being here. Thanks to TEDx and the organizers for inviting me. Um, as, uh, as the kind MC said, I'm, I'm Nir Shade. I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of InCrowd. Uh, we are a technology startup that is based here in uh, New Delhi. I'm originally from the US, um, and uh, I, I can tell you more about InCrowd as we go through this. So before we get to exactly what InCrowd is doing, I want to tell you a tale of two stories. I want to tell you about two different things. One that I'm pretty sure a lot of you here are familiar with, the rise of the Indian consumer over the last roughly 20 years. And a second story about new and cool customer loyalty. I'm going to approach this from two perspectives. One perspective is going to be from the business and market perspective of how things have been changing in the last 10 to 20 years. And the other perspective is going to be from a technology perspective. The new tools and mediums that we have that change the way we communicate and what that means for retail and customer loyalty. So let me talk first about what's been going on for the last 20 years in India. Um, and one of the biggest things that's happened is the introduction of choice. Right? Now where I come from, from the US, in 1991 we had a lot of car brands and in 2011, we still had a lot of car brands. Same was true for what we drank and what we ate. But what's happened here in India is that there's been a shift where a new generation of consumers now have choices that did not exist in this market before. You've gone from you know, one or two car brands to having multiple car brands. You've gone from having a select number of domestic foods and beverages to having a global range of foods and beverages. And this has introduced choice. And choice uh, is the first step towards creating a consumer loyalty program. In the last, in the last 10 years, that choice has introduced um, a lot of growth. And Indian retail, the story of Indian retail, as most of you probably know, has been all about growth. So from about 2004 to 2010, you've seen 11, over 11% 11 annual growth, which is higher than the GDP growth of India. It's, uh, in terms of the retail market in its value, it's doubled from 2004 to 2010. And still organized retail, which is you know, most of the kinds of uh, brands and chains that, that we talk about when we talk about introducing technology into the retail sector, makes less than 5%. Now that's going to change even more dramatically over the next five to ten years and Indian retail has a long way to go uh, and a lot of potential that it can meet. So all the signs point up. You have growth, you have new stores coming up, you have, you know, as, as, as the businesses grow, they make more money, customers get more choice. So why does loyalty matter? Why am I up here, why am I up here talking about loyalty? So keep that, keep that one piece in your head about choice, the introduction of choice, the introduction of new brands. Um, and let me talk a little bit about loyalty in a more broader context. So wh what are the reasons that brands have, for a long time, cared about loyalty? And there's basically two main reasons that I want to point to. One is the idea of keeping your customers. Obviously, that's what loyalty means. Now, loyalty, probably the most famous example of loyalty when it comes to a customer product, has been frequent flyer programs. They were originally introduced by American Airlines in 1981. In fact, there was actually a smaller airline that went out of business in the 70s that introduced uh, frequent flyer programs and then went out of business, so no one talks about them. The, the su first successful one was American Airlines in 1981. And uh, when they started it, within a year, their three largest competitors had started a similar program as well. The idea there was, well, we have some people who are making choices about which airlines they want to fly. And if we give them something that makes them feel special for being on our airline, will they keep coming back to us over and over again? Will they stay our customers? And the answer was yes. Today, there's over 14 trillion unused miles across the world, which combined has a total value of over $700 billion. That means that these airlines have liabilities on their books for $700 billion, and the reason they're okay with that is that the value of keeping their customers is more than $700 billion. Now the second reason for loyalty and why it matters, and in my opinion, the bigger reason, is about data. Uh, I'll tell you a story about the mixed salad shakers. So before 2000, McDonald's had a relatively unhealthy menu. Um, and they decided to do a survey. They decided to send out a bunch of people with clipboards into their stores in the late 90s. And they found that 
in the afternoon period, when children get out from school, they would see a huge influx of women bringing their children to McDonald's stores. And the children would get hamburgers, and they would get fries, and they would get shakes. But the women would not buy anything. They were potential customers that there was, no, there was no product there for them to buy. They didn't want to eat hamburgers. They didn't want french fries. So in 2000, McDonald's, uh, based off of that analysis, came out with mixed salad shakers. And in 2003, they followed that up with premium salads, which are now available in a number of different markets. And all those women that had been coming earlier and not buying anything suddenly became customers of McDonald's. And they created a product that actually worked. And you see this across many different industries. If you come out with, the, if you can find the right data, and you can develop a product based off of that data, you can actually create things that work. So now we have two different points here. One is that Indian retail, the story of Indian retail, has been about the introduction of choice. All these brands have come up, and for the first time, any consumers are asking, how do I choose which car I'm going to buy, and which restaurant I'm going to visit, and which clothing store I'm going to go to buy my new pair of jeans? How am I going to decide all of this? Right? And there's a lot of factors that go into that. And the second is that there's a lot of new data being created, and there's not very many smart tools that are available right now to capture that data. Now, in other markets, in the last five years, last 10 years, we've seen a lot of new things come up that are really exciting. Uh, so that logo on the left is on Groupon, which is, I think, in history, the fastest growing company and the fastest company to get to an IPO after being created. Now, Groupon is, for those of you that are not familiar, they basically come out with digital coupons that you buy and you can visit a store and the store gets you as a new customer, uh, to, to oversimplify it. Now, they, they've been also involved in trying to build different levels of uh, customer loyalty. And a lot of this is done through online transactions, it's done through credit card payments, it's done through different things that really haven't taken off yet in the Indian market. That guy in the middle there is, uh, well, it's an iPhone that's running um, an application called Shopkit. Right? And again, in markets like the US, you'll see a lot of ways that brands are trying to connect with customers using their smartphones. And the smartphone penetration as of last year in the US, over 50% of Americans have smartphones. That's not the case here in India. The case here in India is not that way at all. And even people that do have smartphones, those of you that might have Blackberries or iPhones, you might not have the data plans that are required to actually get you updated real-time information. So that doesn't work here either. And the last one here that we have is credit cards, right? And a lot of uh, credit card companies have started introducing new technology in the way that these plastic swipe cards work, where you can run programs on the cards, right? You can add, you can add points on it, and you can add different incentives on it. When you swipe it, it automatically, intelligently picks out who you are, what incentives are available to you, and applies it to, to your purchase or to your transaction. Um, still, a lot of Indian retail is done in cash. So that tool doesn't work as well. So what's the answer, right? How do we introduce a tool to India that actually works and lets these retailers, A, help their customers figure out which brands they want to choose, and B, capture the data that they need to make smart decisions about marketing uh, and branding? So I'm not here to say that we have the answer, but I'm going to tell you about InCrowd and what we're doing, and maybe that might help us figure out some of the ways that we should go. So, so what's InCrowd? And we have a really complicated diagram up here. But very simply put, um, we use touchscreen tablets as our medium. We put these touchscreen tablets into retail locations where customers can come in, log in with their mobile number, earn points by logging in their purchases, and then use those points for rewards that those stores should set up. Um, they can access that in the store through our, through our tablets. They can access that online through Facebook as well as, uh, as, well as our website uh, and soon through, through mobile applications. So the customer is obviously happy. They get this very nice you know, tech savvy tool where they go in, they get points for free, and as they prove their loyalty to a, to a certain brand, they actually get to use that, uh, those points to, to, to get free stuff. Now the merchant gets a bunch of really cool stuff. The merchant gets the incentives that they want to provide to their customers to come back over and over again. Uh, gets data and um, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of powerful data about his customers. Because until he can actually track his customers on an individual basis, until he can say, hey, you know, this guy Neeraj has come in on a weekly basis and spends 200 rupees every time he comes in, he doesn't really have the data to be able to say what kind of customer I am across his other 1,000, 5,000 customers that come in on a weekly basis. Um, and I'll get to a little bit more of that as well. 
a little bit of visuals here. This is how the InCrowd tablet works. Uh, it's, um, I'm in an engineering institute, so I can tell you a little bit about the technicals. It's, we use seven inch um, Android tablets. Uh, we've designed the app ourselves. Um, most of our, we've used a number of different tablets, uh, mostly using capacitive screens. We feel that that's a big differentiation uh, factor in terms of the easiness of how tablets are to use. Most of our tablets are in food and beverage locations, um, including QSRs. This is a Subway. Uh, Subway is one of our clients. Um, and also sit down restaurants uh, here in Delhi and in Gujarat. Now, if you could uh, play that video, this is just a, uh, I'm not going to play all of it, but it's a quick show of how the tablet actually works. So as a customer, all you need to be able to do is tap a touchscreen tablet and have a mobile number that you use to register. And here you can, you can watch a demo registration in progress. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about touchscreen tablets and why we felt that this is the medium that we were picking. Um, as I said, in other markets, you have a proliferation of other devices in people's pockets that you can reach out to. If everyone has an iPhone, that's a really powerful way of getting your application onto their, onto their personal property. But when everyone doesn't have an iPhone, you still need to have a powerful connected device that's easy to use. And we feel that tablets, uh, ever since Apple came out with an iPad, have been that kind of tool. And you, know, you may have heard of stories of people showing children the iPad and how easy and natural it is for these children to be able to interact with the iPad. It's just the way that people want to interact with the screen is to touch it and feel it. And we found that when we put our tablets into locations, it becomes very quickly an integral part of how customers engage with that brand. Um, so I'll cut, off the, I'll cut off the video there. Uh, you guys can probably go to our website and see more about exactly how that works. Um, I wanted to get back to our merchants. And our merchants, uh, as I said, get this data, right? So they get all these customers logging in their transactions, logging in their purchases, logging in their visits. And we give this, uh, this ability to our merchants to actually use that data, slice and dice their member base, and do interesting things, run campaigns, reach out to them, uh, 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 whatever they want to do. Um, and it all starts with the data, right? I keep hitting hammering this point, but it all starts with the data. This is stuff that, you know, until recently, no one's actually had. So that's it about InCrowd. That's about the problem that we're trying to solve. That's my contact information if anybody wants to stay in touch. Um, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.